sanctuary of prayer tonight across this house. Amen. Let's tune in to the channel of heaven tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come before your throne room, God. The heaven is your throne and the earth is thy footstool, Jesus. God, may the mighty rushing wind of Pentecost come through this house, Lord. God, brush against us with the angels' wings, I pray, God. But we bow down before you. We are honor and adore you, Jesus. We worship you, God. In the beauty of holiness, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now we honor and adore you, Lord. Let unction sit upon this choir tonight, I pray, Jesus. God, let anointing destroy every yoke of the sanctuary, I pray, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, our heart is fixed, our mind is made up, oh Lord. God, we're following you all the way tonight, Jesus. No turning back, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. No turning back, oh Lord. What is there to go back to, Jesus? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in the house of the Lord tonight. God has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, even at the right hand of the majesty on high, Jesus. God, we come before you for all tonight, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. May the anointing of heaven, Jesus, come over this house, God. Sit on us, I pray, Lord Jesus. Let the right hand of God, all power, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus.
living God. Fall afresh on us, Jesus. Your name is wonderful, Lord. Counsel, the mighty God. Everything you
be in the service with us. Sunday school department is coming to give reports tonight. God bless them. A wonderful day in the Sunday school, on the buses, Super Sundays. Lots of great things happened across the premises today. And in the adult sanctuary here tonight, there's just a handful of folk that were in this service this morning because uh, reaching and teaching and preaching across the 41-acre campus, across the seven different churches. So God bless them tonight with these reports in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today we have 403 riders on our buses.
name. And at least seven people are filled with the Holy Ghost. And we are thankful for that number every week is consistent. There's consistently baptisms, consistently uh, people being filled with the Holy Ghost. And we are so thankful for that. I would like to mention that of that 1,073, 63 of those people are staff members in Sunday school. 63. That sounds like a lot, but it is not that many when you spread them out among all of the areas that we have. And so rather than just sitting back and in awe of how awesome Sunday school is, we want you to be involved in what Sunday school is. And um, there's always a place for everybody in the church. And so there's never too many people doing something. There's never enough people serving breakfast. There's never enough people anywhere. And so if you feel like it looks like everybody's got it covered, we don't. And so I just want to put that out there. We don't have it covered. We do a good job of making the ends meet, and um, everybody steps up to the plate, the plate and fills them wherever they're needed, and that is what keeps Sunday school going. But if you're thinking about joining Sunday school, please don't hesitate to do that. All you have to do is come talk to me. There are always availabilities where you can be filled. And so please join us and let God bless you when you get involved. You will see how God starts to work in your life and in your family's life. God bless you. So this week we're home Bible study. We had 142. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I also like to say that uh, for the ladies who are trying to get a closer connection uh, with their sisters and a lot of the new ladies that's coming into to the, uh, the ministry, on uh, Friday, the April the 15th, and I think they do it once a month on Friday, Sister uh, Myra Gomez, if you can raise your hand, and Sister Kelly uh, Calhoun, Kim, they actually have a Bible study to uh, plug you guys into. It takes care of like prayer, they, well, excuse me, they pray at the end of it, but during the Bible study, they actually you know, go through like some of the beginning and the closer walk, closer relationship with God. And so I got a chance to sit in on one of those. It was really, really great. They did pray afterwards. I heard they had a tremendous prayer um, meeting this Friday. Again, April 15th, talk to Sister Myra and or Sister um, Calhoun, and they can assist you with it. Thank you. Sprouts went over to the ballpark. We had our Super Sunday, and yes, it was super. We had a great time over there. We had a total of 71 children with us. <laughs> Lots of fun. We had inflatables, hot dogs, nachos, plenty of games for them to play, snowballs. We sent them home full of sugar. So, but it was a fun day. The children enjoyed it. We had new children that had not been with us before. Their parents came back there to check out what's happening. So we were happy to introduce ourselves and meet them for the first time. Continue to pray for us and little sprouts. Praise the Lord. Our ladies' um, teen class this morning is ages 13 to 17. We had a very special day. Um, Sprouts was not using their area, and so we took full advantage, and our uh, teen ladies got dropped off over there this morning, and um, long before anybody got there, Sister Spell was prepping for the day for our young ladies. I am so thankful for a true mother of the church. Amen. And no age, no age. Bonding with her 
And so I am so thankful that she took time out of her very, very busy day to spend the day with our teen ladies. They had such a good time. They learned a life skill. They had a good time making bread and spending the day with her. We had a wonderful day. We had 29 young ladies in there with us this morning. <laughs> time at Girls Connect. I don't know what you came to do, but in Girls Connect, we came to praise the Lord. We had 54 young ladies join us. Thank you, Jesus. We call them our young ladies, but they're really our little sisters. They come in, they have their hoodies on, they need their hair fixed, they get their hair fixed right before service. We get them fixed up, ready to go, begin worshiping. Sister Caitlin did an awesome job on forgiveness today. That was what our lesson was on. Jesus stepped in. Hearts were touched. Including our teachers. Because one young lady comes up to you and says, Thank you for pushing for me. For, she didn't say me. She said us. They thank, are very thankful for what all of you do. We are very thankful for what all of you do. You are making a difference. We have seen young ladies whose have, lives have been completely changed. Matter of fact, one of our young ladies today won the big tall cotton candy. I get excited about cotton candy and so does everybody else in our class. <laughs> this particular young lady used to be shy, possibly got in trouble here and there. She's been coming for years. Today, she participated at 100%, gave it everything she got, worked in Sunday school because she has a job. You make a difference whenever you step up and help our young ladies, our young men. You do make a difference. Keep praying for us at Girls Connect. Amen. I don't know about you, but the joy of the Lord is my strength today and every day. We had a great time in Young Men's Elevate this morning. We had a total of 27 in the house today. And uh, we didn't make any bread, but we did have an arm wrestling contest. And so there were some, some gauntlets that were thrown down. We also heard about why it's important to get up off the mat if you've been knocked down and finish the race all the way to the end. Keep us in prayer this week. Amen. Praise the Lord. And boys connect with ages 8 to 12. We had 70 students come to the gym today to worship with us. This Tuesday morning at 7.30 a.m., the motor coach will be leaving the church parking lot here at 7.30 a.m. We'll be driven by Brother Robert Williams. Also, if you want to sign up tonight, make sure we know you're coming. And when everyone's here, we can leave a little earlier. And going to New Orleans, 600 Royal Street, Louisiana Supreme Court. Once in 246 year history of the United States of America, you're going to see the First Amendment on trial. Right of the people to peacefully assemble, the establishment right, free exercise, and free speech rights are all going to be on trial before seven judges. Louisiana Supreme Court, the highest court in the state of Louisiana. LASC, that's Larry Apple, um, Sam, and Charlie, LASC.org. You'll also be able to view it. Even if you don't have time to view it live, at least go to that website and view it live. Put your phone down or your computer to give the appearance to the judges that a lot of people are interested in this because this will determine the future of our church and determine a lot of the future of the United States of America. So be praying about that Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. in New Orleans, Louisiana Supreme Court. Thankful tonight for um, the opportunity to host the Health Freedom Rally April the 1st, flyers in the foyer, lots of other great things coming up. Amen. You we sincerely want to thank you for joining us in today's service here at Life Tabernacle in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 
it means so much to us that you have taken time to worship God with us today in our online service. As you can see, there are many people marching and giving by way of tithing and offering at this time while you are viewing this video. We encourage you to get involved in the tithe and the offering. The Bible says to give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And when you give into the church, into our ministry, I assure you that you are sowing your seed into good ground and it is going to produce a great crop for many people, including yourself. So God richly bless you in Jesus name. We'll see you back in the service in a few moments.
my hand the preeminence. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about Jesus. God bless you as you see it in the fear of the Lord tonight. Up until the year of 1543, it was commonly believed that the universe revolved around the earth. Then, as it now, they lived in a me-centric society where they felt and believed and even understood unscientifically without any proof that everything revolved around mankind. It was not until Copernicus came onto the scene some 50 years later that he told us that the earth was not the center of the universe. In fact, it's just the third planet in a number of nine in our universe from the sun. In 1593, some 50 years later, Galileo proved that everything revolved around the sun. As you could imagine, opposition to this idea was so great and met with such disdain and even malice that Galileo would be imprisoned for his discovery that everything, not the earth, but the earth revolved around the sun. He was considered a heretic, excommunicated from the Catholic Church because we want everything to be about us. After all, I'm it, and I'm what matters the most, and I'm the reason that God made everything. Nothing could be further from the truth. Why did God create the universe? Psalm chapter 19 and verse number 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. When God made the heavens and all that is in our galaxies and our universe, he did it to declare his glory. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. That's why God made the universe. And all that is therein. Why does God have a people? Isaiah, the 43rd chapter of the 7th verse. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. You were made for your own pleasure. You were not created for your own glory, but we were created for God's glory. He said, I have formed him, yea, I have made him for my glory. Why does God allow troubles in our life and in this world? Psalm 50 and 15, the Bible said, and call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and, and thou shalt glorify me. If it never appeared to you that God has you in trouble, that you could glorify him. Did it ever dawn on you that troublesome times and heartaches and losses and setbacks is so God ultimately said you would call on me and I would deliver you and you would glorify me for having set you free from your trouble. God wants us to see his glory in everything. We are sun reflectors because we reflect the image, the glory, and the power, the light, and the brightness of God Almighty. When the sun goes down on this side of the world this evening, it's rising on this sphericity of a planet Earth that we all live on, and it's coming up 
somewhere else on the other side of the earth. The moon having no light of its own in our dark sky tonight is going to reflect the brightness of the sun that is on the other side of the world shining brightly. You and I have no light of our own. You and I have no goodness in our own selves. You and I have no brightness about us whatsoever. You and I reflect the image of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 18 says, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of God are changed from ours unto God's image. Amen. We are mirrors that reflect the brightness of Jesus Christ. And the more we become like Jesus, the more we reflect Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Any goodness in you, any greatness in you, any success in you, any achievements in you, you owe that all to God Almighty be the glory. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse number 24, the Bible said, Declare his glory among the heathens and his marvelous work among all nations. It is not time to put your light under a bushel when you get around a group of unbelievers. It's, it's no time to take the tough tail and hide and, and ashamedly declare that you're a Christian when you're in a world of darkness and sin, iniquity, and transgression. Amen. Nothing, nothing could be more detrimental to your walk with God than to be ashamed of who you are in Jesus Christ. I couldn't think of anything that would break the heart of God more than for God putting you in a situation and surrounding you by heathens and you being like the psalmist in Psalm 137 for there by the rivers of Babylon we sat. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion for they that carried us away captive required of us a song and they said how strange land. Amen. We're not in Jerusalem anymore. We can't sing like we used to sing. We can't witness like we used to witness. We can't shine like we used to shine. But did it ever dawn on you, amen, that God put you around a group of heathens and unholy and unrighteous people, amen, that you could declare his glory, amen, that you might declare his marvelous works among the heathen. I never will forget it. You can look at it framed somewhere in an office in my home. Amen. The first time that I ever appeared before a court, before a judge in a courthouse. And in a 34-page manuscript, he finally wound up asking me if I was going to hold church again and break the governor's emergency orders. Amen. And you can look for, for 17 of those 34 pages. It was a manuscript of me preaching to that courtroom and to the attorneys and to the district attorneys and to the court reporters and to everybody that would listen. Amen. You know, yes, I got in trouble for that court appearance. And yes, I was put on house arrest for that court appearance. You said you lost. It all depends on if First Chronicles 16 and 34 is right. That we are to declare his glory among the heathens. You might look at it as a loss, but I look at that as a win. Amen. You can look at what's going on in our world today. I heard about the shoe 
salesman uh, that went to one of the remote uh, side, one of the remote countries uh, of Africa. And when he got there, uh, he said, get me on the first plane back home to his sales manager. Uh, they said, what's the matter? Uh, he said, everybody here is barefooted uh, and you got me over here trying to sell shoes. Uh, do we bring me back home right now? Uh, Some time had passed uh, and that company knew that there was a, a fruitful sales going around over there and they sent another salesman he got on the phone immediately and said send me everything that you can that you have an inventory he said because nobody over here has shoes and I'm fixing to sell more than I ever had you can look at America as being in trouble if you want and it is you can look at Baton Rouge and see 17 year old boy Amen. You can choose to say, nobody wants to know Jesus. That's what you think. Everybody that I come in contact with, I say they need Jesus. They might not realize it right now. They might not recognize it right now. But we need more preachers. And we need more Bible study teachers. And we need more bus routes. And we need more buildings to hold Sunday school. You might say that the world's in trouble and the world's going
unto thee. I need you always, Lord. If everything's about you, then everything's up to you. In 1 Corinthians 3 and 7, so one man planted and another man watereth, so then neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth anything, but God giveth the increase. A sister Yasmin six years ago in May of 2016 said, said that I've got a cousin that's incarcerated down in Central America and if we send a letter from a pastor and notarize it that when he gets to America that he'll come to church and get baptized, I think God's going to work a miracle. I had never heard of that in my life. Didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I said let's go on ahead and do it. Amen. Six years later, fast forward, that brother's back here, Brother Eric, that you saw got baptized down in the river yesterday morning. Amen. Six years is a long time. Six years is a long time. You said, is she? It's not about her planting. It's not about you watering. It's about God giving the increase. We need planters and we need waterers. We need workers and we need bus captains and we need preachers and we need singers. But it's God that gives the increase. Don't go thinking you're something because you can plant. Don't go thinking you're something because you can plant seeds. Don't go thinking or something because you know how to fertilize the seeds. God needs us. Yes, God needs us. Oh, yes, the harvest is great and the labors are few. But if God doesn't give the increase, then my planting is for nothing and my watering is for nothing because it's not about my planting and watering. It's not about your planting and watering, but it's all about Jesus and in all things he might have the preeminence. That in all things he might have the preeminence. That's why not a day goes by that somebody doesn't get baptized in this church. Because God's going to get the glory for that. It's not about my church building abilities. It's not about my financial wherewithal or mental aptitude. It's not about how many people we can get in the water. It's so that God can get the glory. If people are getting murdered every day in Baton Rouge, then we need two people getting baptized every day in Baton Rouge. If people are getting gunned down as teenagers every day in Baton Rouge, then we need teenagers getting the Holy Ghost every day in Baton Rouge. We need more. We need more of God and less of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God give it the increase. That's why. Month we celebrate 13 years of pastoring. 13 years ago, we had we had about 50,000 square feet on 14 acres. Fast forward 13 years, there's 41 acres and 106,000 square feet on the roof. And 30, 38 or 39 buses this week. Amen. And you know what? It's to God be the glory. While the world is in a recession and inflation is out of control and Congress doesn't know what to do. And the White House doesn't have a clue. You know what? The church has got an opportunity that has never had before. First Corinthians 1 and 31. He that glorieth, let him glory in God. Glorify God. Glorify God. He that glorieth, let him glorify God. If you know how to make money, then you give God the glory for that. If you got a nice house and a nice set of wheels, you thank God for that. If you got a respectful family living for God, you thank God for that. If you know how to teach and reach and preach and pray and be a soul winner and bring food, amen, the unction and the anointing on your life, then you thank God for that. So that he that glory shall glory. like an excuse, acting like an apology either. Don't go around scared to, to speak up on a fountain of water and try to get a drink. Hey man, meekness is not weakness. Meekness is boldness and courageousness and, and, and the intestinal fortitude to say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You might not like it. You might not like the way 
I sing shall run or dance. You might not like the way I scream and pray and sweat and cry when I'm worshiping God. You might not like the way we run buses unintimidating. You might not like the way we clap and scream and sing. That's all right. It's not about you. It's all about Jesus. Amen. You might not like the way I dance and leap for joy. That's all right. It's not about you. It's all about Jesus. You might not like that person and the way she shouts or the way he prays. That's all right. It's not about you. Six and nineteen, and verse number twenty. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is given to you, and ye are not your own, but ye are bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus. You don't belong to yourself anyhow. You don't belong to you anyhow. You are not your own anyhow. You don't get to make up your mind what you're going to do with your life anyhow. You don't get to call the shots, Mr. Big Shot, anyhow. You don't get to have it your way. Burger King misses you know who anyhow. But this is God's church. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. glorifies God. Your success advertises Jesus. Your success makes God known. People didn't know about apostolic Pentecostalism until 24, 5 months ago. People didn't know what the UPC was. People didn't know what the WPF was. People didn't know what the PAW or the COOLJC was or the ALJC was. Amen. But when somebody said, no, we will not comply. We're not going to close the church. We're going to keep going and worshiping. Yes, 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 we know you don't like it. Yes, we know you call us a cult. Yes, we know that you have slandered us and defamed us. Yes, we know you make fun of the way we worship and dance and run. What you don't know is we feel the same way about you, but we feel sorry for you because if you knew why God made you, then you would be doing what we do too. That's why. Amen. You cannot be ashamed of who you are. Philippians 1 and 14. Hallelujah. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds. There's people in the Lord confident by my bonds. They're confident because we were in prison. They're, they're confident. They're waxing confident in my bonds. That governor said, don't go back to that church. That mayor said, don't go back to that church. That governor said, everybody quit holding in-person church services. But that pastor, that pastor, and that church, amen, what you don't know is that God has made others wax stronger, Philippians 1 and 14, because of our bonds. What some of you don't realize in the church is when you get in trouble and you don't know a way out, and you don't know what you're going to do It makes other people stronger to watch you Man, if I was a him, I'd have quit a long time ago I don't know how he's still going He must have clean guts Because he's running on his guts only And the power of God You know what it is? I get strength out of watching people suffer And keep on going And take a lick and keep on ticking And get in trouble but keep on worshiping They are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Preach. Come on. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add afflictions to my bonds, but the other of love. You be 
surprised that some of your greatest, some of your greatest criticism and some of your greatest uh, adversity will come from your brethren. Some of them preaching out of contention so that I'll stay in jail. Some of them are envious so I'll stay in jail. They wouldn't like anything better than to be able to tell that congregation that's looking at us tonight. You see there? You see there? We told you he was wrong. You see there? We told you he was wrong. What kind of brother are you to want your brother to fail? And if you want him to fail, you better check your Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter what organization you're a part of. You better check your spiritual pulse. I don't want anybody to fail. Even if you're not preaching the whole truth I'm preaching, some preach out of contention. Some out of necessity. What you forget was G.T. Haywood didn't always have the truth. At one time he was assembly of God. What you forget was a lot of people that now preach the truth. Just like the majority of y'all in this house tonight, you didn't always know who Jesus was. But you knew that there was a God. And when God filled you with the Holy Ghost, you said, I, I'm going to preach it. Not out of necessity, but I'm going to preach out of love. Standing every way, whether in pretense, in truth, Christ is preached. Christ is preached. Christ is preached. It don't matter who's doing the preaching, Jesus Christ is preached. It don't matter what alphabet is behind his name, Christ is preached. It don't matter if they're Catholic or Baptist or Assembly of God. It don't matter who they are or what their pedigree is. Christ is preached. And if Christ is preached, it's just a little while before God. It's going to get the glory And God will lead and guide you into all truth Hallelujah Ain't no middle ground here You either come into the light Or you walk in front of the light Holiness is a tunnel It don't matter where you're at in the tunnel It matters which direction you're walking in the tunnel if you might say I'm holier than she is or I'm more sanctified than he is. It don't matter where you are in the overall scheme of things. What matters is which direction are you walking? Are you walking toward the light or away from the light? Because there's some people that are more sanctified than I am. And some people might know how to pray better than I pray and preach better than I preach. That's not what's up for question and debate. What matters is which direction are you going? What direction are you looking? Because the feet are going to take you where the eyes are looking. And if you're looking at the world, the feet are going to take you there. But if you're looking at the cross, the feet are going to take you there. If you're looking at revival, the feet's going to take you there. If you're looking at fear, the feet will take you there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 96 and 3. Declare his glory among the heathen. His wonders among the people. Don't cocoon around the heathen. Come on. Don't go into hiding around the heathen. Freedom. Elijah, Brother Woods so eloquently talked about in that latest documentary. The Lord came to the edge of the cave said, I'm not coming in there to you. I'm going to stand out here and ask you, what do is thou here, Elijah? I didn't tell you to go into hiding. Who gave you a vacation? Who told you to go in there and cocoon? I don't want you hiding in the face of Jezebel. I don't want you hiding in the face of Ahab. It's time for you to show out, old boy. It's time for you to scream louder than you've ever screamed. It's not time for you to blend in and be a mixer. It's time for you to stand up and show out and show off. It's time for the church to be the head and not the tail. It's time for you to be bold and radical. Charismatic and gracious and merciful. Declare his glory among the heathen. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. Declare his wonders among all people. Whether you think you should or not, declare his glory among all people. Whether you think they want you to or not. Amen. Whether you believe it or not, Tuesday morning, 
morning, whether we win, lose, or draw, God, God is going to get the glory. Amen. We don't agree. We don't agree. They might say we don't agree that he should have held church during the pandemic. A good judge, a good judge is a person that can best perceive the the intention of legislative enactment. When the legislators legislated this law and this ordinance, what were they thinking when they enacted this ordinance? That is the purpose of a judge. A good judge is an individual that can best perceive the meaning of legislative enactment. Legislative enactment, 1974, the Louisiana State Constitutional Convention, there was a group of individuals, and one of which was Lewis Woody Jenkins, and they couldn't come to terms with what to write or what really to say. They were Democrat and Republican, he was Democrat. They said, well, Woody, since you know everything, why don't you just go ahead and write it? He said, I will. One of the things that he wrote in his legislative enactment, he he said an RS, which is revised statute 29 colon 736D, the emergency powers of the government shall in no way infringe upon the rights of the citizens of the state of Louisiana, which are clearly stated in the Bill of Rights and the United States Constitution. You can have all the powers you want, but they cannot infringe upon the rights of the citizens of the state of Louisiana. A good judge is one that can best perceive the meaning of legislative enactment. And you can't go back to 1776 and ask the framers what the First Amendment meant when they said Congress should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof and the right of the people to peaceably assemble. And that was the first of 26 amendments. But you can't go back to a living member that wrote the Constitution and he will tell you whenever I wrote that the emergency powers of the government shall in no way infringe upon the right of its citizens to, to worship freely and assemble freely and go to church without being arrested. That's what I meant. So we need a good judge that will say the governor was wrong, the chief of police was wrong, the sheriff was wrong, the legislator was wrong, but God is right and the church is right. We need them to do but if you don't do that, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Let God be true and every man a liar. I'm going to keep on preaching whether I'm in jail or in the pulpit. I'm going to keep on witnessing whether I'm in this pulpit or locked down behind me. I might get more, I might get more glory out of you being locked up. I might get more baptisms out of you being locked up. It might cause some of you, some of you leeches that parasitically draw off of the strength of a handful. It might cause you to step up to the plate and say, now that he ain't here no more, I've got to do more now. Hey Amen. The church is going to go on anyhow. It don't matter. It don't matter whether I'm here or whether you're here. The church is going to go on anyhow. Hey Amen. I'll tell you, there's some young men in this house that are just chomping at the bits to say, give me an opportunity to go to jail for Jesus. My friends go to jail for crack and meth and cocaine and marijuana. It's about time somebody goes to jail for Jesus. It's about time somebody gets arrested for their conviction. I've related with the Apostle Paul in every area of his life. Stoned and left for dead by my brethren. Beaten by my brethren. Imprisoned by strangers. The only thing I haven't related with is to chop my head off. Amen. And if we're here through the great tribulation, you're going to get that opportunity. You're either going to take his mark or give up your head. 
You say, oh no, I'll compromise somehow. I'm a smooth talker. No, 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 no. He that he might not buy or sell, say he had the mark, the name, or the number. We're in apocalyptic territory right now. When we go to New Orleans uh, Tuesday, you won't go into a restaurant without a card that says I can buy here and I can eat here and I can shop here. If you don't have that card, you ain't going to do it. Hey Amen. We're in Revelation territory right now. Just because it hadn't happened in our city doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Hey Amen. They're already putting on, lacing up their shoes in the dress rehearsal for COVID number 20 right now. If you think the past 25 months was something, you had not seen anything yet. Hey Amen. The Ukraine is just a, a weapon of mass distraction to try to get your mind off of what they're plotting and scheming right now. But in the spite of all that, there's still going to be a church that said that in all things he might have to pray. Isaiah 24 and 15. Wherefore glorify the Lord in the fires. John 9. This man is blind, Jesus. Who sinned? His mother or his dad or him? He said none of them. Quit blaming his blindness on somebody else these days. His blindness is so that we can glorify God. Son, I say unto thee, receive thy sight. And God was glorified as the blind eye opener. Who failed that the church has been closed down for two years? Where did we go wrong in America organizationally, familiarly, through marriages and divorces? What is going on? It ain't about none of that. It's about God getting the glory. Amen. Because you might think that things are beyond repair. You might think that things are beyond God's reach. But God does his greatest work in the worst times of society. God has his greatest revivals among the most adverse of situations. Lazarus was resurrected to glorify God. When others see your faith in spite of your circumstances, you glorify God. When others see you keep coming and coming and coming, you glorify God. When others see you standing up and waving your hands, Brother Charles, with cancer all in his body and chemotherapy and hemorrhaging. You don't know the pain he's in right now. But God said, you see there, devil, you thought he was going to quit. You thought he was going to backslide. Look at him now. Just look at him. I'm getting glory. Oh, I get glory. I don't know about you, but God gets glory out of a saint of God that suffers and keeps on praising God. God gets glory out of a church that whenever we're in a recession, the church keeps buying buses and the church keeps buying new land and the church keeps building more buildings. When others seek your faith in spite of your circumstances, God will be glorified. For all things are for your sakes, 2 Corinthians 4.15. All things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For our light affliction. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, 40 years is just an hour. 80 years is just two hours to God, 120 minutes. In the overall scheme of the 42nd thousand year of creation, a 50,000 year plan, and a thousand year millennial reign where a child's going to die at 100 years old, and a wolf and the lamb's gonna lay down together and the child's gonna walk a lion on a leash and there'll be no more tempter in that generation in spite of all that our light affliction which is but for a moment is working for me a far more exceeding an eternal waiting glory can't get your eyes on the stuff you can see can't get your eyes on the stuff you can see you gotta see what nobody else can see. You gotta get your eyes on the invisible. Because the things which are not seen are eternal. This trial is not about you, it's about glorifying God. 
This trial is not about me. It's about glorifying God. Court losses are not about me losing. It's about glorifying God. I'll show you. I'll let him lose, 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 lose. Amen. Just to show you, he's going to keep on glorifying God. I'll let gas go to $10 a gallon for diesel, and he'll buy more buses and keep on running. I'll let, I'll let, I'll let electricity double. Amen. And they'll keep on running the air conditioners. You know why? Because one man plants and one man waters. But God's going to give the increase. about me, it's not about you, it's about Jesus. Everybody in here is going to stand or bow someday. Everybody in here is going to stand or bow some way or the other. Everybody in here is going to stand or bow one way or the other. Everybody's going to get their opportunity. Everybody's going to get their chance. This trial is not about you. It's not going to get any easier. It's going to get rougher. It's going to get tougher. It's going to get harder to live for God. It's going to get, it's going to, as thy days are, so shall, so shall thy strength be. Oh, but, but, all that will live godly shall suffer persecution. You're going to suffer persecution. But if you want power, you must suffer. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, work day and night for it, give up your time, your sleep, and your peace for it, if only desire of it makes you quite mad enough never to tire of it, to hold all other things tawdry and cheap for it. If life seems all empty and useless without it, and all that you scheme and all that you dream is only about it. If you'll gladly sweat for it, fret for it, plan for it, lose all your terror for the devil and man for it. If you'll simply go after that thing that you really, really want with all your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope and confidence, stern pertinacity. If neither cold fat Famished or gaunt, our cold poverty, our sickness, our pain, a body, a brain can keep you from that thing that you really, really want. If dogged and grim, you besiege and set it, then you will get it. It don't matter what kind of trials I gotta go through down here. It don't matter what kind of heartaches I gotta go through down here. It don't matter who walks away from me down here. As long as God doesn't leave me, as long as God doesn't walk out on me, as long as my friend, my friends may distract me, my 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 my, my world may think I'm foolish, but as long as I've got King Jesus. revolve around me anyhow. I revolve around Jesus. My life revolves around Jesus. What's that, Lord? Yes, sir. What's that, Lord? I've just gotten halfway across the world. You want me to go back? Yes, sir. Somebody over in Macedonia is crying. Somebody in Macedonia is calling. You better go. Lord, it took me six months to get here. I didn't ask. I didn't ask you about anything. I don't ask your schedule to put you in the storms and trials. I, I've got my own schedule. I've got my own clock I'm looking at. And it's time to wrap this thing up on Mother Earth. And it's time for persecution. And the only way some people's ever going to run to this altar and be born again of water and of spirit is whenever mass persecution comes upon civilization and starvation. Paul John said, I'm not I see a loaf of bread being sold for a day's wages. You're going to pay $200 for a loaf of bread. You're going to pay $1,250 for a, for a piece of fish so that you can spit it with how many is under your roof. And when the world gets that bad, brother, and things are so terrible that nobody has the answer, I'm still going to have a church. There's going to be a tabernacle. There's going to be a people of God. Hallelujah. When that black horse comes, the measure of wheat's going to be sold for a penny. A day's wages, you're going to buy some molded bread. It's coming. Hallelujah. It's not about us anyhow. 
It's about Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's why you better get busy in Jesus. Oh, yeah. And God, we need you more than we've ever needed yeah. you before. I know he's in trouble, God. I know she's hurting. But God, you're going to get the glory out of this hurt. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right now. It's not about me, God, but I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right now. I lift my hands and bow my knees to worship at your throne. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. Oh, I need you, Lord. Oh, my God. 